Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Alexey, and today I have a special guest, Jeroen Simmons. Jeroen is a wonderful musician and professional drummer. He is a former drummer of symphonic gothic metal band Epica. I have been listening to Epica for many years, and to me it's a huge honor to have Jeroen on my YouTube channel. So let's start our interview. Hello, Alexey. It's uh, great to be in your show, man, on your YouTube channel. So I'm here in my uh, music school. We have the holidays now, so I'm here in a multimedia room. I try to do my best to explain some stuff in the great English, English I can do, you, you see. Of course, it's my second language, but I do my best. I think in English, but I can speak less than that. <laughs> my first question is, how did you become a drummer? I was always fascinated about music when I was sitting uh, in the car with my parents I listened to Depeche Mode the emo music I had an uncle that played music M my mother she was a little bit like a dancer my grandfather I didn't know he was also very musical so for me m music was like some kind of magic so I first wanted to play keyboard and organ, and then I heard almighty drums. I was like, no, the drums with the possibilities, with the, the feet, with the rhythmic stuff, with the, wow, the energy, you know, the passion. So, so I was very young. My second question is, how old did you start with drumming? And at what age you were going professionally for drums? I started playing at the drum corps when I was nine. Then after that, I around 14, I started to play a little bit grunge music. Then a lot of when I was 15, 16, a lot of metal, death metal. Then around 19, I was listening to fusion music. So I went uh, from metal. So I went from Meshuga, Cynic, and Death. It's a famous uh, death metal band. I went from that into Music like Che Korea, Weather Report, all kind of fusion, jazzy stuff. And when I was around 19, I started to take very serious drum lessons because I want uh, to become a pro. So I studied <laughs> very hard, but I originally started, started drumming very hard and practiced very hard when I was 20, 20 and a half. So I went to the conservatory there, here, here in the Netherlands. Yeah, when you tell me when, did you become a pro because I'm a late bloomer? I tell you around 24 and a half. So a little later, Alexi. I read you are a bit famous for your practice times. Can you tell more? I don't know if I'm famous for my practice times, but I'm famous for myself with my practice times. If you tell me like uh, the last 20 years, um, what kind of days uh, did you have? Then I tell you, yeah, practice, uh, reading, uh, all kind of uh, thinking about a lot of stuff, very creative, because that's the person that I am. I want to, how do you say, grow. The year before the high school of music or the conservatory of music, I studied 10 hours a day. When I was at the conservatory, I studied around four or five. When I was in Epica, I studied six, seven hours a day. After Epica, I went to teach and I practice even more. I always practice to become free because the most important thing for me is when I feel and think something that I can play it. And that's, it, it has to do with, with the flow feeling, flow state. So yeah, when you want to be good at something, you have to practice at least, everybody knows 10,000 hours, but it's also about the concentration. When you are very creative, you have the tendency to lose your concentration, so yeah. You have to get it back all the time. So for me, practicing is just like something normal. So it's about growth. It's, it's the same thing about mixing, practicing, you know, mixing. It's normal reading books because I try to be an open book. I want to be having a lot of information, like uh, some kind of a nerd type, but for me, it's all fine. How many music styles can you play? And how can people see you? Because you are known for your albums with Epica. I think people know me for my work with Epica, but when you listen closely to the drums, you hear also a fusion about 
different music styles and also my classical background. And how do I see myself? I think I'm an all-round drummer. I can play all kinds of styles, but what I can play very well is the very extreme uh, stuff. So not the, 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 the 300 beats per minute double bass stuff or the people from Latin America that they do with the, the, the left foot, the clave stuff. I could, can do a little bit of that because, or the, the very small uh, jazzy stuff like, you know what I mean? Elvin Jones, Bill Stewart, creative. I can do something of that, a blend, but I think I'm more all around. And if you are want to put me in a box, I'm a fusion drummer who wants to uh, fuse styles of music and who wants to be open to music. So I'm not thinking about any kind of style because if I hear music and I feel the message is good and the, 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 the vibes are good and the, the melody and harmony is, is very good, then I want to create. I see myself as a creator, I want to give. So it's a little bit abstract answer, but it's what I can do now. How did you join Epica? Uh, I was lucky uh, when I could join Epica because Mark, the front singer, and Ad, that's the, the guitar player, the other guitar player, they knew me from my old band when I was playing drums at that. And Ad, he played guitar at that old band. So Mark already knew me. They uh, searched for a drummer. It was the, the, the little stage just before Ep Epica went into Epica. Before, before that they were um, called Sahara Dust. So at one time I got a call from Art and he told me yeah, the drum and the, the female singer from Sahara Dust, they, um, they went, they left. C and can you uh, come and um, <laughs> play drums for Epica then? So like Sahara Dust, so late Epica again. <laughs> So I said, yeah, it's okay. I didn't have to do an audition because they already knew me. So I felt honored. And we went to a Dutch place here, Tilburg, to meet the other guys and uh, Simone, of course. That was my audition. And then I did play on the, the Sarah Dust demo. And then uh, very, very suddenly after that, very soon after that, Sarah Dust became Epica. And we went to Germany to record our first album, Phantom Agony. So it was some kind of roller coaster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a great one. What gear Mark Janssen uses to create his guitar tone? Sorry, Alexi, for me that's a very um, difficult question because at that time I wasn't busy with, with mixing or, or, or looking at, at guitar players' gear. I knew he played a seven string Ibanez, I knew uh, he played a Mesa Boogie kind of <laughs> amp, but I, I wasn't aware about that in that time. So I'm sorry, <laughs> maybe you can write him and then he can tell you because he's a n nice guy. So yeah, I hope this helped a little bit. Have you ever used drum samples when you're mixing Epica's songs? First of all, I didn't mix the Epica albums I was involved with. That was a, another mixer because we had a record company and they hired a team from Germany to mix the the albums. But I can imagine that they, that they uh, did use samples on first the snare drum and second the kick drum. Because if you listen good, you can hear that. I can remember my first snare drum on the Phantom Agony was a small one, a 12 metal one. The second one was a very big sonor artist, a very big bronze snare drum. So if you lis listen closely, you hear, of course, they, they reinforced the sound with samples. Of course, we are talking about uh, production here. So, yeah. How you joined Produce Like a Pro Academy? First of all, uh, I saw Warren doing his best uh, on YouTube. And when I first born, I thought, wow, that guy uh, speaks the language of music. He's very creative, he's very nice. He, he's a guy from the real world. And he, he, he gave a lot to the people. I was like, wow, that guy, he works very hard. He gives a lot. So suddenly I, I, I will, Already was mixing uh, for years, but I was like, yeah, maybe try out the Produce Like a Pro Academy. And uh, when I was there, I feel like like home. 
so to say, because yeah, it's it's a big community. The, the people are very warm and nice, and everybody helps each other. So I think it's like this. It's normal to help each other, because if we are, everybody is unique. If we help each other, we all grow, and because we are un unique, we stay ourselves, and that's very important. We can be a copy of somebody else. We just have to be ourselves, but you have to be aware of that, of course. So Warren did his very best, and I think that guy, he, des he deserves the best because he gave he gave his best, and also a lot of other guys or channels, of course. But yeah, so I, I was there for two years, and then yeah, for me it was fine. So I learned a lot of details and a little thing here, little things there. So yeah. That's my story. Hi Warren, hi Alexi. <laughs> After working with Epicon, what new info did you learn from Warren Hurt at the Academy? I learned a lot from Warren, but I think uh, Warren didn't know that about me, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I learned a lot, I learned about details, I learned about uh, perfection, uh, production, uh, mixing ti tips and tricks. I think I learned a lot, like everybody does with Warren. It's about being open and wa wanting to learn and making a lot of progress and doing a lot of stuff. I think there's no magic, but if you work hard and you want something, you feel inside yourself, you want something to create, then you can do it. What microphones Simone uses for tracking down her vocals? Oh, that's a difficult one. I remember the DVD, we will take you with us. Uh, Mark did use the Shure SM7. I thought Simo Simone, she used the Neumann TLM. I can remember that, but it was Neumann because <laughs> our mixes were from Germany. Germany, so yeah, it was Neumann. Sorry, Alexi, I want to give you more info, but it's it has been a long time ago, so yeah. What are your favorite tips on drum recordings? First of all, my favorite tip is drink a lot of tea, English tea. My second tip is um, don't think too complicated about sounds. Just try to search for the basics first. And the basic is just the human being who is developed into a musical drummer with the technical stuff. And what is technique? Technique is the ability to do stuff that you hear in your head and transform it into music. So you have to have technique. And so that means if you are a drummer, you have to have inner dynamics. Inner dynamics are the stuff that you play with the volume. You can think about uh, like sliders on a, on a console or something or a mixer. So if you are playing rock or pop orientated beats, you have to have some balance with your, if you're a right-handed guy or girl, you have to have dynamics about the right foot and the left hand. Those two are dominant in the right hand, the light part, because the hi-hat is also high sound. It has to be more light. So if you are playing a rock beat, you want to have some power. Boom, bam, boom. A lot of people, they play like this. Too many force or power with the right hand. So they have to be aware like the the roles and the rules about creating a good sound. That's, that's uh, officially my first tip. <laughs> my second tip is tuning, listening to a lot of music styles, tuning, knowing about pitch, knowing about the rules of tuning, knowing about the, the room that you are in, knowing about the sizes that you, uh, the size of drums you are taking with to a session. Also, uh, what kind of drums do you take? for instance, to a, a rock session or a power rock session, or you know what I mean? Like a Led Zeppelin. You don't show up with a 18-inch um, uh, kick drum and just <laughs> think that they accept that. But on the other hand, it's a little bit weird because um, I, I had in the past do it, uh, have done some kind of funky rock song and I just brought my 18 inch bass drum and the studio that we were in they were very analog based so he uh, the, the sound guy was like wow that guy's uh, that guy <laughs> of i hope that guy but the the kick drum that thing sounds 
huge. So it's also about playing big. You know what I mean? Uh, when, when I had uh, drum lessons from a fusion jazz drummer in my past, he told me like, if you want to have a sound, you have to mean what you play. It's also very important. You have to play with your heart, with your soul. It's like telling a story. And if you play behind a small drum kit and you play softly, all right, all right, that's okay. But if you play at the same kit and you play very aggressively rocky blah, then it sounds like that so a lot of stuff a lot of tips i think the dynamics in all kind of ways is very important i read you record your drums also at your studio space can you tell me something about that yes i record my own drums i play uh, dixon drums i have 20 22 inch kick drum I have 10, 12, 14, 16. It's uh, a Dixon Cornerstone series. It's all maple. I have a 14 aluminium snare drum and a 12 side snare drum. Uh, the heads I'm using are Remo coated Emperors. Let me see the, uh, what do I use more. The mics, I have to be detailed about that. For the kick drum, I use the Beta 52. I use the AKG. 112 also the, the the beta 91 for the click for the toms for the 10 and the 12 i use the v7x from se electronics because they have a little extended like the famous <laughs> microphones they have a little extended low for the snare drum also use the sm57 and the v7x because greg wells few years ago he showed us guys like hey you have to try this mic out for snare drum so yeah thank you greg <laughs> uh, for the symbols i have a lewitt mics i lose small di diaphragm microphones the, those are called the 040 match pair but i also use the let me think the rode nt 5 as and the octava mk 12s let me see i use those mics also for the hi-hat and the right if you want to ask me about my cymbal setup it's very small i have a right cymbal here i have here my hi-hat i have here a crash splash a crash and a little china so it's very small but i want to play like a jazz drummer so i have to search for more sounds and be creative so i, I told you i'm playing 10 12 14 16 but and suddenly <laughs> I can also play 10, 14, 12, 16. Wait a minute, 10, 12, 14, 16. So it's about being creative. What is your recording gear? I already mentioned about the microphones, but my interface is a Midas MR18. It has 18 inputs, 16 XLR jack combined, and I record at um, 80. I don't say it correct, 48 kilohertz, 24 bit. And my DAW is Reaper. First I started with uh, Cubase, but after a while I did a project and I discovered Reaper and the, the possibilities with Reaper, they are almost endless. So I, I, lo I love the stability of that. So I re record that. Reaper uh, Midas MR18. What kind of endorsements do you have? Um, I have several endorsements, but nowadays they don't call it endorsement, but they call it uh, a promoter or an artist. Let me first say I'm a promoter for Dixon Drums. I'm new with them. Thank you guys from Dixon Drums for this gym, for this opportunity. Uh, I'm a promoter for Dixon Drums. I'm an artist for the wonderful guys of PSP Audio Plugin. Thank you guys. Adam and all the guys, Anthony. Thank you, Pessix, for the endorsement. And nowadays, of course, being an artist for Balbex drumsticks. They're from Eastern Europe. And Amidia Symbols. Yeah, that's it. So um, for Dixon Drums, I'm the promoter. And for the rest, I'm the artist. I saw you wrote a drum book, a complex one. Can you tell me why you wrote it? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I studied a lot of drums. I practice a lot and I have a lot of drum books. Or I had a lot of drum books, of course. And I always was curious about when I saw things. So I saw exercises. What can I change about that? So then you're going to write down when you, when you came home. <laughs> For example, you, you write down ideas. 
and little ideas become very big and bigger, 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 biggest. And suddenly I had <laughs> a booklet like this. So it was, for, um, if you tell me why did you wrote a complex one? For me, uh, it was like being creative, being expand the horizons. How do you say that? Just being creative, uh, trying to be deep, trying to be intense, trying to, yeah, trying to create something it's about giving to the world, being creative. And the first it started within myself, and then, like many artists, it started inside, then you can bring it out. But it's a whole big process, so, but <laughs> it's fun to do. And it's very rewarding, because if you can let it out, then suddenly you are at home and you think, hmm, I have my first drum book, wow. What about the second? Because I now have a lot of ideas. Oh man. So, yeah. What's your best drumming with Epica sound like? Can you mention some concerts to watch for, maybe? My best drumming with Epica, I can remember I saw something about the 2005 in Chile concert. I remember the never coming out concert of Paradiso 2005 in the Netherlands here. Someday it has to be a release, so that was a very good concert. I remember the We Will Take You With Us DVD. That also was a good one. So I hope I have a lot of good ones, but Atlanta I remember, yeah, of course. What are your goals for the future about your music career? Oh man, I have, I have a lot of goals because my music career is not only being a drummer or a studio drummer, although studio drumming in all kinds of styles is my biggest passion, but nowadays I'm also very passionate about mixing music, producing people, helping people, a lot of stuff. Also, uh, try, I try to be as good as I can uh, with techniques, drum technique, drum techniques, and, and being complex with some uh, kind of polyrhythmic stuff. And, it's all about music, so if you ask me what do you want to become now in five years, I want to uh, grow further like I'm doing now. I want to become, I hope, a great producer, mixer, a drum uh, clinician, a studio drummer, a composer, and drum teaching is also helping people. So yeah, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> but I have the luxury that I have a lot of time, so I make my best out of it. Of course I have goals and those goals are sometimes too much and it's all of, for me all about music, producing, mixing, studio drumming, teaching, writing books, also um, getting to know a lot of stuff from real life, so to speak, because I, I love to read about business, I love to read about philosophical stuff, about human behaviors, about you know what I mean? So for me, uh, every day is one, one big uh, adventure. So I try to pull all the information towards me. What are your goals as a drum teacher? For me, uh, the goals as a drum teacher is to become better and better, of course. And also um, I, want to, um, I want to grow towards the new time. And what's the new time? It's the online drum coaching time. It's about being doing uh, online stuff, being a, a servant for people. Just give a lot, just uh, give a lot of examples, be in a drum clinician, you know what I mean? G giving a lot of information. So first you take information, then you give it. Also, I love to uh, see my students as real people. <laughs> and I love their stories, I love to see them as equal and together we can grow to a higher state of being how do you say that consciousness you are a psp audio wear artist among many pro audio engineers how do you see yourself and what are your favorite psp plugins how do i see myself first i must say i'm very honored to be in the psp family psp audio family thank you adam Anthony and the rest. Secondly, how do I see myself? Yeah, I feel honored because I also have a very big passion about mixing and analyzing and creating with, with sounds and you know what I mean? So how do I see myself? Yeah, I hope one day that I'm, I can become as big as the rest of the PSP uh, audio artists. 
so I don't have a false ego or something but I'm passionate about <laughs> mixing also so I do my best to become a great one a great mixer also I mean and my favorite PSP audio air plugins I love the PSP Infinity Strip because you have a lot of stuff you can create and do and it's very intuitive you know what i mean like oh i have to do a little bit of compression here i also have recently my own presets for that uh, great plugin so uh but if you want an honest question uh, or in my case <laughs> an, an honest answer i love all the stuff psp i will be doing because i can see the guys they are doing at least 20 years it with care and I feel lucky uh, to be alive right now because I can use their plugins to create. So how lucky can we be in 2021? So I love them all. And yeah, I love all, all people nevertheless because I'm a little bit hippie. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jaren, for such a great interview. It's a huge honor to talk to you. I wish you only the best about your music career. Alexi, I want to thank you for your... Um, questions i want to thank you for asking me to do my stuff for you i wish you my best and i hope you grow like everybody else and that you give a lot so that you can naturally take a lot back in a naturally way and it's funny that that thanks to warren that we met each other so uh, thank you, Alexi. Also, thank you, Warren. And I wish you guys uh, a great time, good health, because it's a strange, it's a strange uh, time nowadays with the COVID. But let's stay positive. Let's be honest with within ourselves and what what we really want to create here on Earth. Thank you, Alexi. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.